how I would define success. I would say somebody who... Sir, what is your vision about the research capabilities, especially in a research institute, considering there is a cut down in research fund and increase the taxation on equipment, sir? Put as much money you want in R&D. If you're not actually producing the thing, it'll just be a budget. So the problem is, we don't respect labor. We respect conceptual work. So I think one of the things that I want to push is moving more into the physical production space. I'd like to welcome all of you here. Thank you for coming. So let me start by asking you guys, so I get a sense of what you're thinking. How would you define success? A one word answer, uh, happiness. Success is journey. There is no stoppable in the success. Like anything uh, which does for the betterment of the humanity, I would consider success. Which I, like anything which like helps people around me. I'd say a sense of fulfillment in whatever you're doing. So whatever your goals are, whatever your visions are, as long as you're happy in the journey and in the moment, I'd say that is a success for me. Nobody said money, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I was coming to that. Oh, you're being polite or what? <laughs> success is helping yourself grow and then that leads to growth of all the people. So one asset is money and the other is care and uh, development of the society as a whole. But generally if you were to ask me how I would define success, I would say somebody who observes his surroundings or her surroundings accurately and maneuvers around them in an efficient manner. You know, that would include things like dealing with fear, dealing with greed, dealing with anger, dealing with other people. That's how I would define success. So, uh, considering your long interaction in politics, especially in Indian politics, we were wondering what were the issues that we focused on before, let me start it out, or like if, uh, say 10 years back, and what are the issues that we are focused on, focusing on today? Or we, as in us, or me, or, or as the country? As the country, and as also country. Would like to, uh, we would like to know that what do you think that we should focus more on? What should, what should be part of the national conversation? More? So, in the Congress and the UPA, we generally believe that the resources should be distributed more fairly, uh, growth should be uh, wider. Um, in the BJP, they are more aggressive on growth and they tend to believe that you can focus resources. They believe on what is in economic terms called trickle down. On the social front, we feel that the more harmonious society is, the less people are fighting, the better it is for the country. That would be, you know, on the sort of social side. On the international relations front, probably be some differences with regards to the way we relate to other countries, but broadly it will be similar. Hello, sir. Uh, my name is Swapnanil. In the state of global unrest, uh, what is your vision of what India's role should be? Um, when it comes to treading the line of non-alignment while at the same time promoting democracy overseas? So the single most important thing uh, going forward is how India navigates this conflict between China and America. And really between the Americans and the Chinese, one key question is what is going to happen to India. This gives India a couple of things. In a situation where the two people, the two superpowers are going head to head, we have a balancing equation. We have a balancing ability, right? So we can say that we are either your friend or your friend and we want this from you and we want that from you. So India is in a space where it can get quite a lot more than its power would give it. And so if India intelligently walks through this thing without getting stuck or without making a major mistake, then we might benefit from it. Namaskar sir. So your father, Honorable Sir Rajiv Gandhiji, founded Jawaharlal Nehru Vidyagas, a pioneering step towards quality education for CBC, especially in rural India. Recently, uh, the, according to UDIS 2021 data, the net enrollment ratio for secondary and high secondary education is around 53% and 35%. Additionally, our quality doesn't is not up to the required global standard. So what are your policies and what is Congress Party's vision to increase the enrollment rate and quality as well as accessibility to everyone in, for education? No, I, I feel that a country 
needs to guarantee quality education to its people. And I don't think that the best way to guarantee quality education to our people is to privatize everything. Because frankly, uh, when you bring the sort of financial incentive into the game, you don't actually give a quality education. I mean, you know, I've said this many times, the best institutions in our country are government institutions, They're yours being one of them, right? And so, so I, I argue for much more money being spent in education by governments. I also have serious problems with the way our education system is set up. Uh, I don't think our education system allows the imagination of our children to thrive. You might not agree with me, but I think it's a very restrictive system, top-down system, and I don't think it is broad enough, right? It's very narrow. I mean, I walked from Kanyakumari to Kashmir, and I must have spoken to thousands of kids, and I asked them, what do you want to do? Lawyer, doctor, engineer, army. It can't be that there are only five things to do in this. But that's what our education system is pushing. That, you know, success, as we said, success as far as our education system is concerned is, if you're an engineer or a doctor, you join the IAS, IPS, or then you get into the forces. And really, that's just going to be 1% of our population. Maximum two. 90% of our population is never going to do this. Right? So the whole thing is geared towards this 1 or 2% who are going to become engineers, doctors, and then poor fellows, when they don't succeed, then they are, you know, they're depressed and they're upset that I couldn't make it. But really, it's impossible for 90% of India to become engineers and doctors. And it's not even required. I mean, it, it, it doesn't make sense. So, allowing kids to do what they want and allowing them to do, to experience um, and do multiple things. Our education system disregards many, many things. You know, it, it undervalues, uh, it undervalues many professions, overvalues these four or five professions, and then tells everybody, bhai, yehi karna hai. So, so, those are the type of things I would change. What is one of the few important things that you would like to see change in the Indian higher education system? In India, but what I remember in the classroom was, there's a very clear hierarchy. That's the teacher, and we are students. And that person has a role, and we have a role. And that person is going to basically tell us what he knows. So it's very hierarchical structure and knowledge is imparted straight down. And sometimes if the student says, you know, I don't agree or I don't understand, the teacher will be like, listen, be quiet. <laughs> and if you do that too many times, he put you at the back of the class and he'll like his five, seven so-called, call them toppers or sidekicks or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Who will repeat what he says, right? The strength of the American system, which is that they will allow you to express yourself, they will allow you to engage with them, and they will broaden your vision. But where they completely fail, and they're not interested at all, is in the internal system. So they are very interested in what is outside you, the road, the tree, the animals, uh, everything outside. But inside, they're zero. Literally, they just, they don't even have a concept of it. Whereas in India, we might not be so good at the outside, but we are pretty good, especially our our traditional systems are pretty good at introspection, looking inside, self-observation, right? And then we have certain basic principles here, ahimsa, truth, etc., etc., that are very powerful, but are not in our education system. Namaste, sir. Uh, my name is Aman Mota. Sir, what is your vision about the research capabilities, uh, especially in a research institute, uh, considering there is a cut down in research fund and increase in the research consumer and in equipment, sir? In my view, innovation will come broadly from the act of production. The problem is that we are not actually producing. Or the innovation emerges from the act of production. Okay, So that's one problem. The second problem in India is that we don't respect labor. So we don't actually respect the act of production. We respect conceptual work. Our society doesn't respect that physical work done by hand. And so, we don't fund that work done by hand. We're not actually respecting the skill. And we're not giving money to the skill. But innovation comes from the skill. Innovation doesn't come from the sky. If you start respecting the carpenter, you start respecting the cook, you start respecting the shoemaker, you start respecting the mechanic, then you will start putting money into his business. And the moment you put money into his business, you'll get innovation. 
So I think one of the things that I want to push is moving more into the physical production space. So to me, really innovation comes from that space. Put as much money you want in R&D. If you're not actually producing the thing, it'll just be a budget. Thank you for coming.